Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will look at matrix exponentiation and this is from maths number theory topic. A prerequisite before watching this is to learn about the binary exponentiation. So the link for this video will be present in the description below. Now similar concept will be applied on matrix to, uh, to calculate the matrix exponentiation. In this particular video, there are multiple things that we are looking at and not just calculating matrix exponentiation. So you need to watch it till the end. The first thing that we will look at is finding a to the power n and some of the basic things that we will revisit is how to multiply matrix and finding out the identity matrix of any given matrix. Then we will try to apply matrix exponentiation to calculate a to the power of n where a is the matrix and n is the power nth term in a recurrence relation with the degree of recurrence relation and what type of uh, recurrence relations works for matrix exponentiation and what does not work. Then we will also see an example by using the Fibonacci series where we will be trying to find nth term in log n time and at the end we will be looking at all the valid and invalid recurrence relations with respect to the matrix exponentiation. So I think we have got an overview. Let's now get started. So the first important thing that you should know is how to multiply matrix. So this is a basic thing. So I will just be revisiting very quick. In this case, if let's say you are multiplying a matrix with a size P by Q and uh, another matrix with a size Q by R, the row of the first matrix column of the second matrix has to be same. And when you multiply the result will be P by R which is uh, basically the row of the first matrix and the column of the second matrix that will be the dimension. If you try to multiply then you will see that element by element for calculating the top left corner that means 0 comma 0 you will be at the 0th row and you will be moving from left to right in the first matrix while you have to move in the first column top down. So keep multiplying 2 with 1 and add it to 3 by uh, 3 so in this case it will give you 2 plus 9 which will be 11 and similarly you have to just go to the next column for the same row 2 into 3 which is 6 and 3 into 2 which is 6 so it will be 12 and likewise when you are done with the entire row then you go to the next row and repeat it for the same columns right so this is how the multiplication is done similarly uh, you can take second example and you see what will be the final dimension it will be the number of rows of the first matrix and the number of columns of the second matrix okay now you can also do the dry run of the code which i have written here it will just be denoting the exact same thing given a matrix a with a dimension p by q and matrix b with a dimension q by r where i'm assuming that the entire matrix is n by n while you can also extend this solution to work for rectangular matrices right so in this case I am assuming that P equals to Q equals to R, right? So simply you can apply the same idea and you will find that this code will be absolutely working with the given idea. So I hope you will do this dry run. So let's move on to the next topic which is our identity matrix. So in this case if you have a given matrix like a 2 by 2 matrix and you are required to find identity of that then it will always be the column by column size. That means in a 2 by 2 matrix, it will be of size 2 by 2. In a matrix of size 3 by 2, the column is 2. So the identity matrix size will be 2 by 2. Now what is the identity matrix? You take any matrix and if you multiply with the identity matrix, then you get the exact same matrix as the result of it. Like how you do in a simple multiplication, if you take any number, the identity value is 1 in multiplication so that you always get back the same number by multiplying with that number, right? Why is this important? Because in the binary exponentiation, you know that the start point of any of the multiplier is 1. So when you want to grow from certain number by doing multiplication, the start point has to be 1. Similarly, in matrix, you cannot simply take 1, but you have to take an identity matrix, which is equivalent to saying 1. Okay. And that is why identity matrix becomes important in this case. So A multiplied by IN which is the identity matrix will be equals to A, right? So if A has the dimension P by Q and identity matrix has the dimension Q by R, then A will be equals to P into R. And this is actually a proof of how the identity matrix is always column by column of the A matrix, right? 
so in this case if you see this p and this p is same and this r and this r has to be same right now these two matrices being same a and a you know q will be equals to r okay and that is how i can write that q is equals to r so if q is equals to r i can replace it with q and i will say that the dimension of identity matrix is q by q where q is the number of columns of the a matrix right so always take the column and that will be the size of your identity matrix column by column size fine so the identity matrix will be q by q dimension so if a's dimension is 2 by 4 identity matrix will be 4 by 4 in such a way that if you multiply then you get the row here and column here to get 2 by 4 again which is the same matrix as a similarly if a is 4 by 2 then the identity matrix is going to be column by column which is 2 by 2 and the result of multiplication row column so it will be 4 by 2 which is the same as the initial one right so i hope you have understood identity matrix now let's look at how to calculate matrix exponentiation using the concept of binary exponentiation so in binary exponentiation you know that if you want to calculate a to the power of n then we will be starting with the uh, with the value 1 and i will try to reduce this n in such a way that we will we will square the base so what is the base base here is a so we will square the base and we will half the exponent again we will square the base and we will half the exponent okay we will have the exponent and we will continue to do that unless this n value becomes zero okay so that means i will be calculating till n equals to one so if you if you uh, take this i have already explained this example in detail in my binary exponentiation video so this is that code now in this case if you uh, to see the start point is result equals to one and i'm trying to reduce this n here right and if n is odd then i will be saving one power in the result and square the base and half the exponent so if you want to calculate 2 to the power of 7 i can write it as 2 to the power 3 into 2 to the power 3 into 2 to the power 1 where this one power for odd power will be saved in the result so the result was 1 it will be multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 okay and then i can write it as 4 to the power of 3 the 4 to the power of 3 is equivalent to 2 to the power 3 times 2 to the power 3. So this will be getting lost and that is why I am saving it in the result. Okay, I hope you have watched this video. Similarly, I can do the matrix exponentiation. In this case, I have to find a to the power of n where a is our matrix and n is the nth power that I want to find. So I will be starting with the identity value i, which is the identity matrix. In the binary exponentiation, my identity value was 1. Here it is identity matrix in case of a matrix multiplication. I will be applying the exact same logic, squaring the base and halving the exponent. So until this n becomes 0, I will go in and check the power. If the power is odd, then I will save 1 power of a in the result. And the result is identity matrix. So I will be applying matrix multiply instead of just applying a multiplication because this is not a normal multiplication it is it is uh, trying to multiply two matrices so a with the result here also i have multiplied a with result after this square the base so if you square the base you cannot just multiply a with a as you did in binary exponentiation here you have to do matrix multiplication of a and a then you can always have the exponent as the same way in binary exponentiation right so if you follow this process since the matrix will be assumed to be of a certain size uh, i mean it will be smaller so the time complexity of this entire approach will be log n and this will also be log n right now depending on what is the size of your matrix if the size of a matrix is 2 by 2 then the number of operations will be approximately 8 and so that will be a constant yes this will have a higher constant than your usual binary exponentiation because of the matrix multiplication runtime fine otherwise the final complexity is going to be very similar now let's learn about the degree of a recurrence relation so if you think that a n is a function of a n minus 1 n minus 2 and so on till n minus k then the current term depends on k number of preceding terms first term second term and the kth term right k number of preceding terms and that is why this will be called as a kth degree recurrence relation okay so if you think about a degree one recurrence relation then a n equals to c times of a n minus one where c is a constant it is a constant and 
the current term depends on only one preceding term and that is why it is a degree 1 recurrence relation. If you look at the second example, in this case a n equals to c1 a n minus 1 and c2 a n minus 2, the current term a n depends on the preceding two terms and therefore this is a degree 2 recurrence relation provided c1 and c2 are constant. So we should note that matrix exponentiation works only with linear recurrence relation with constant coefficient. So if you look at the first example here, tn equals to n minus 1 plus tn minus 2 square, this is non-linear and therefore uh, this will not be applicable. Matrix exponentiation cannot be applied in this case. Second example, tn equals n times tn minus 1. The coefficient here is a variable, it is not a constant and therefore matrix exponentiation cannot be applied. Okay. So this is just uh, for you to understand where to apply matrix exponentiation. Now let's see a running example of applying matrix exponentiation on a recurrence relation. Okay. So in this case we will try to find the nth term in a recurrence relation and we will take uh, the most popular example of uh, getting the nth term in a Fibonacci series. Fine. So you know that from Fibonacci series the recurrence relation is f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. That means nth Fibonacci term will be the summation of the previous two Fibonacci terms and the base case starts with f of 1 equals 1 and f of 2 equals 1. So this is what I will be assuming as base case. Yes, f of 0 is also equals to uh, 0 but I am not considering that. So let's start the series and the series will be 1, 1 and uh, the next item, the third item will be the sum of the past two items. This fourth item will be the sum of past two items and so on. This is how the series goes. So in order to apply uh, this matrix exponentiation for calculating the nth term in a re linear recurrence relation, we have to take a transition matrix. Okay. Now what is this transition matrix? Actually the degree of the recurrence relation will tell you what will be the size of the transition matrix. In this case, the nth term depends on the preceding two terms. Therefore, it is second degree recurrence relation. So the transition matrix is always a square matrix and this will be of the size 2 by 2 in this case because it is a two degree recurrence relation. If it is a r degree recurrence relation, then the transition matrix will be of size r by r. Okay. So this is how you find the dimension of a transition matrix. Okay. Once you have done that, depending on where you place the transition matrix let's say you place it as the second term in the multiplier then you have to provide it with some input and the transition matrix will help you transition this input to certain output okay in simple terms you can understand like that so what will be the smallest number of inputs that you can give that will be the smallest dimension of the matrix so if you have transition matrix as 2 by 2 size then the smallest dimension that you have to provide here is at least the columns have to be 2 because the rows are 2 here and then how many rows you you put here is is your choice so i will be putting minimum one row so this is the smallest dimension of the input that you have to provide and this is the transition matrix 2 by 2 so that your result will be number of rows here which is 1 and the number of columns in the transition matrix which is 2. Okay, so I hope you have understood why the dimension of transition matrix is 2 by 2 here. It is due to the second degree recurrence relation and why the dimension of the input is 1 by 2 because the Fibonacci series uh, smallest dimension will be having 2 columns which is the number of rows here and so if, if you have to find the num smallest number of rows it will always be 1. So that is why it is 1 by 2 and due to this being 1 by 2 and 2 by 2 the output is 1 by 2. So the transition matrix is trying to transition your state from F1, F2 to F2, F3. Now if you had uh, written the transition matrix on the left hand side which is a 2 by 2 matrix then you see the representation is going to change because the number of columns here will be equals to number of rows and if you have to decide how many columns you want I will be taking the minimum number of columns, right? So I will be taking only one column and this will give me two by one size output matrix. So I hope now you have got an idea of how this is made. Now let's see the uh, idea of the fast exponentiation in this case. So if you want to transition from F1, F2 to F2, F3, you have to multiply one time with the transition matrix. Again, if you take this output and put it as a new input, multiply it with the transition matrix then you will get f3 f4 
so that means if you go from the starting point f1 f2 and multiply a b c d to the power of 2 then simply you can reach to f3 f4 in one step provided you have the value a b c d to the power 2 that means transition matrix square okay then you can easily reach to the final answer so in this case calculating this matrix m to the power of n where m is the transition matrix can be done faster in log n time by using matrix exponentiation and that is why it will be helping us to calculate the final uh, state in a recurrence relation fine and that is why i'll be using in the fibonacci series so if you look at an example f1 f2 if you multiply with a b c d to the power of n minus 1 it will reach to fn fn plus 1 so finding the nth fibonacci number is only log n because this value can be calculated in log n time and, th and then the multiplication can be considered constant here okay or equals to the alphabet size or dimension whatever it is so let's see how to find the transition matrix now so if you have f1 f2 multiplied by a b c d which is your transition matrix and you get output as f2 f3 let's try to find the equation so f1 times a f2 times c will be added and uh, that will be equated to f2 so in this case if you look this is f2 right so this means f1 term is gone that means a will be equals to 0 and you can also assume that c will be equals to 1 c will be equals to 1 otherwise c f2 how will it become f2 only c c must be equals to 1 right if you look at the second equation f1 b plus f2 d then it will be equated to f3 right and you know in real and you know according to the recurrence relation that fn equals to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 so f3 will be equals to f2 plus f1 right and this is the addition of f1 f2 therefore b and d both will be equals to 1 this is how you can derive all the values of the coefficient and uh, if you know all the values a b c d then you can form the transition matrix right a was equals to 0 and the rest of them was equals to 1 and that is how you get the transition matrix using solutions to the equation okay so first write the equation get the solutions find the coefficients and then build your transition matrix once your transition matrix is built you want to get the nth power so apply fast exponentiation or matrix exponentiation on top of it so if the dimension here is let's say k by k then your complexity is going to be k cube times log n okay because matrix multiplication is involved and we have to take time complexity for that and every step involves matrix multiplication as you know in the binary exponentiation like in the matrix exponentiation you at every step you have to apply matrix multiplication so that's what is having this k cube complexity for a dimension k by k so k cube log n will be the actual complexity but in this case the k value is just 2 so 2 cube will be 8 8 times log n therefore the complexity here will be log n and this is how you can find out uh, the transition matrix final uh, result and you can just multiply with the initial f1 f2 to get the nth fibonacci number in log n time right so i think it is clear in this case k will be always the order of recurrence relation because while deciding about the dimension of the transition matrix we took care of the linear order of the recurrence relation right so this is all about matrix exponentiation if you want to apply this technique then you can solve the problem lead code number 3337 where matrix exponentiation is directly applied to solve the problem if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible see you guys in the next video thank you if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number.